Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Joining me again today is the beautiful, talented, and brilliant Katie Hopkins. Hi, Katie. <laughs> That's a bit of an oversell, Barry. People are now expecting those things. I may under-deliver. It's a concern. I think it's accurate, so just play along, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I'm, I'm astounded by the agreement among three people that I don't think have ever agreed on anything. Donald Trump Jr., uh, AOC, and yeah. Senator Ted Cruz from Texas, two conservatives and one communist, are on the same page on this wacky series of trading platforms that are all involved in Robin Hood. What's going on? Yes, so in, in very brief, um, that somebody on Reddit, a social media platform, recognized that traders were trying to short the market over a particular share uh, offering from GameStop and encouraged uh, Reddit users to get involved. And they were making a huge amount of money by kind of gaming the system. And in order to stop the little people making money, some of them making $4,000 a go, some of them, it looked like they were gonna be able to bankrupt some of these hedge funds that had gambled very heavily on this stock. What happened was these trading platforms called Robin Hood and others stopped the trades of the little people in order to protect the hedge funds of the big powerful people. And what it did, of course, it blew up this idea that hold on, not only are we powerless, not only are we having our elections messed around with, now the, the stock market isn't as it seems either, and the little guy isn't allowed to make money. But the point of this is that what happened is that AOC, Ted Cruz, D Donald Trump Jr. all ended up in agreement, of course, that this was wrong. And what I think is almost lovely about this story, not only is it a great sort of parable of the little guy getting their voice heard, but it is actually a great thing when AOC, Ted Cruz and Donald Trump Jr. can agree on a point. I, I think that is a very great thing that people can put politics aside and just go for what is right over what is wrong. And that's what happened in this moment. And I think we need more of that. Oh, no question. But consensus building seems to have gone down the toilet uh, right around the time that Biden got inaugurated. <laughs> yes. So True. I, I don't think we're going to expect to see more of it. No. So speaking of crazy, crazy times, um, we've got some really wacky stuff happening in the U.S., but it's even worse in the U.K. when we're talking about enforcement of these lockdown restrictions relating to governmental response to COVID. I'm hearing stories about people being arrested for the most bizarre charges. Can you detail a couple of those? What's going on over there? Yeah, sure. So in the UK, and without a word of exaggeration for effect, it's illegal to leave your home right now. If you go out, you're allowed to go out once a week to get some shopping, groceries, no stores are open. Uh, you're not allowed further than seven miles is a radius from your home. You're only allowed to exercise once a day alone and in a way that isn't as bad in itself it's the draconian policing of that so we had a gentleman yesterday wrestle to the floor in a supermarket for wearing wearing his mask incorrectly then we had two children which it was the thing i loved organized a kind of spontaneous snowball fight because we just had snow here and it ended up it was a lovely thing it was all these kids outside throwing snowballs and strangers who didn't know each other all you know all over the place they got these two kids and they fined them £10,000, so, so $15,000 each for being part of coordinating a snowball fight. I mean, it just is enough to kind of make you weep for, for where did we lose our, you know, the Brits are supposed to be known for our sense of humour and our personality somewhere along the line, uh, or for being a sort of begrudging and uh, grumpy. But, but where's our fun gone? You know, how are we doing this to our own people? And I tell you, Barry, even though British aren't very good at an uprising, there is a large number of people who really, really have had enough. You know, this is now pushing people beyond anything we've ever known. We've never seen anything like this. Well, I, I was, I had a story similar, not as bad, but 
I was at the supermarket here and I was checking out and the lady uh, behind the counter who was checking out my groceries said to me, uh, hey, how you doing? And I said, great, how are you doing? Great. And then she said, um, sir, I need to ask you to pull your mask up a little higher. I can see the bridge of your nose. Uh -huh. and, and I said, okay. So I pulled it up and she said, it's for my protection. And I said, okay. And then she gave me the total and uh, I was paying and she leaned over and she said, I'm really sorry. I had to say that. I think this is all stupid and I just want to apologize personally. I don't think I should have to say something like that to you. And, and keep in mind, she was behind a plexiglass barrier. So, I mean, I would have had to go up eight feet and down the other side to get a germ on her. And she still had to say it, but at least she had the humanity oh. to give me a smile and a private apology. Oh, I just, uh, you know, I find it emotional because um, I think that's where a lot of people have got to. I had somebody, I was out running and they cycled past me and, and they shouted at me because I had my headphones on and they were, I don't know, they just, I caught up with them later. I said, you don't need to shout when you're cycling by. And the lady said, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I didn't really. And I think that's one of the things we've got to a point where people are so sort of uptight that they're saying things and they know they don't want to say it. You know, they're almost regretful as they're saying, they're sort of angry and they can't let it out. And then when it comes out, they feel bad. Um, so I'm sorry, that's such a sweet story. What a sweet lady for saying that. Well, I got the apology and so did you, oh. but meanwhile, we're being deluged over here with rules that are changing Truth. every 12 minutes. So your family has a, has a conflict, I understand. Mm -hmm. um, mom and dad want to get the vaccine and you don't think it's a good idea. How are you going to resolve it? Yeah, and, and that's really happened when I went to the States. When I left, it was all in order. Mom knew it was craziness. She was healthy. Dad's healthy. They weren't going to have it. I left to the States for three weeks. And one of my family members who works in socialized healthcare, healthcare kind of got at them. And I came back and it turns out they've signed up and they're waiting for their appointment. And I don't know, Barry, I feel dreadful in all sorts of ways because I don't want to be the annoying kid that tries to put the parents off. What if mum did get it and the vaccine could have been helpful? I mean, I don't know, I'm a skeptic, but, and then also I feel that, but what if mum does get it and, and my dad, but my mum, and what if something happened to her? What if she was one of the ones who got poorly afterwards? And then I will really want to turn on this family member. So I have all of this stuff going on and normally I feel quite in control of my life, but I don't feel in control of this. So at the moment I'm biding my, keeping my tongue and trying to just say, well, they must do whatever they want to do, but that feels wrong. Ugh. So what, what do you make of these rumors out there, Katie, that airlines are gonna say, not only do you have to have a test that shows you're COVID oh, yeah. free to get on a plane, but you may have to show your COVID green card, meaning, uh, look, I got a vaccination. And if you don't, you can't get on a plane. I believe that's absolutely already here. I mean, uh, we were told by the British government vaccination passports weren't going to be a thing. I have in my email inbox from somebody on the inside, the government contract for a supplier already producing and supplying a vaccine passport. Uh, it's absolutely coming. It's absolutely on its way here. And, uh, and I fear there's going to be, I don't know what it means for travel for people like you or me in the future, uh, but it's a real concern. And what's also a concern is we're always being lied to. You know, you have someone on TV saying one thing and in my inbox, I've got the paperwork showing just the opposite is true. So yeah, I absolutely think it's coming our way. So here's my vaccine question that I ask everybody and nobody seems to give me an answer. And we had dinner the other night with a couple of medical doctors and I asked the husband and wife, they're both doctors and they were clueless. Um, I'm gonna ask you, I know you're not a doctor but I know you're super connected. If, if a great deal of people get the vaccine, like it, it, ridiculous numbers, 70 or 80% of the population and, and certain people say, you know, I'm just not comfortable with it. Um, I don't believe the efficacy. Maybe it works for version one, but now we're up to five or six or seven mutations and nobody knows. They really don't. There's been no research. Um, 
why should the person who doesn't have a vaccine need to be discriminated against by people that do have it? Because quite frankly, just to make the example personal, if I don't get it and you do, mm. why do you care that I didn't because I can't infect you because you've been vaccinated? Can you explain that to me? I don't get it. No, and, and there is no logic behind it other than I know exactly what you're talking about uh, because they try and force the flu vaccine into the normal flu vaccine into our children. So my seven year old, they try and force it in in school. And when you are part of the group that says, no, I'm not having it. I've never had it for my son because he's healthy. I'm told that it's a selfish attitude because I should have him vaccinated in order to protect the elderly who might catch it. Whereas I always have your view as well, which is, well, if the elderly person wants to have the vaccination, good for them. I, I applaud them, no problem. It doesn't and shouldn't affect my son. And when people say, ah, oh, yes, but it's all about the herd, you know, I think, well, I'm not a sheep. My son isn't part of the flock and we are individuals. It just seems to me as well, isn't it, that the other side, they flex with my body, my choice for certain things, which are vile things often that involve end of life. But when it comes to vaccination, my body, my choice is thrown out the window and individual choice is nowhere to be found. Yeah, and, and, and to be really succinct about the question, if using my scenario, Katie, you got the vaccine and you believe it works, and the scientists tell you it does, and the and the pharmaceuticals yeah. tell you it does, and the Ministry of Health tell you it does. Why do you care if I got it or not? Right, and and it's also this weird group thing, isn't it? You know, people in the UK are mad at the moment because some people went to Dubai. Part of me is like, you know what? If they've gone to Dubai, so what? You're just angry because they're having some fun. As long as they weren't the ones that locked you down, don't be angry at the people having fun. Be angry at the government that's stopping you having fun. We misdirect our anger, I think, very easily these days. Well, we've got some weird times coming, young lady, because <laughs> yeah. I think it's going to get to the point where those mysterious passports are going to, and people are going to be flashing them on Facebook, you know, in, for a long time, people were putting on their profile, save lives, stay home. Uh, masks save lives. I'm wearing one. The next one's going to be, I got my vaccine passport. Did you? That's coming. Uh, 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 horrible people. They just love the moral high ground. I always say to people, you know, if you stand too high up on the moral high ground, when I look up, I can see you're not wearing any underwear. And I think that's <laughs> okay, I'm officially stealing that one. That was brilliant. <laughs> Thanks, Katie, for coming on today. And thank you out there in ATP land for tuning in. I want to remind everybody, please subscribe to our text message alert system. We need the way to reach you directly should social media well stumble along the way. All you have to do is text the word truth in the message box and send it to 88202 and push send. We'll sign you up for free. You'll get all of Katie Hopkins every week and all our other stuff too, for free on your phone. And it'll take you about five seconds. For ATP and for Katie, thanks for joining us. I'm Barry Newsbaum.